five, four, three, two. Hey guys, we are no clap. No clap. We don't have to clap now. Everything's sunk. We got rid of the clap. Aww. We removed the clap. We got. We went to the doctor. It's fine. We. <laughs> this is the one thing we all shared. Well, I mean, so we're playing on. So this episode is being recorded on our new recording equipment. So we are probably going to have some growing pains going into this episode. So bear with us if you are an audience member. But we are excited for this one. We came out of the. Sound of Freedom movie, and we are going to be doing a review. Um, once we've done the review, we'll probably play some catch up on some of the most recent pop culture events that have been coming up. We haven't been able to get a podcast episode out in a couple of weeks because of the Fourth of July weekend that happened, and our selfish friends' wedding. Our selfish, selfish, selfish friends. Wedding. You got to say it three times, otherwise it loses so its, its gusto. But um, as always, I am talks too much, and with me are my co-hosts. We have the Cody. What up? And we have the Slim. What up? As always, he is sporting his blue jumper. <laughs> Knee high waiters. I wear the same sweatshirt on purpose every time I come over here. Just so that it could be wrong. And for us, <laughs> this this dude hasn't cana- changed in It's months. canonical yet. I don't change shirts. It's <laughs> so, the same one. So, Slim, you kind of brought this movie. To, I mean, I had seen trailers of this movie, but it was not mm. at the forefront of my mind. Let's just, can you give a short synopsis of the movie, how you found it, why you thought it was so important to get us to do a review on this one, and then we'll dig into the movie. We obviously yep. have plenty to talk about it's today. It's a little but. more serious of a topic. Um, we're not going to dive into too many of them, I think, but once in a while I think it'll be important for us to find a real, real, real-life topic that people need to talk about once in a while because most of the time people just put up them walls and don't want to talk about this kind of stuff. Yeah. But it's about um, child um slavery it's the black market people abduct children um so it's about the story of mainly two children who got abducted and this guy's um on basically his journey and his mission is to find these two children because right away um they're like oh you get how many people have you caught and he's like 100 whatever some 180 some he's like well do you ever find the children 188 pedophiles y- yeah like, and he's like i've saved zero children yeah how many children have we saved? And he just he's like does he, are you really saving people in kind of thing it was like that whole cops mentality with them but it's about their story about going really deep into this ring um going undercover um and getting children back and busting all these these kind rings that are abducting children and selling them into basically sex labor and stuff like that and whatever who knows you know in the grand scheme of things what really happens but um i thought it was really important because we all in the back of our minds know this is a thing but no one wants to talk about it no one wants to think about it so this movie really sheds a light on it and helps us get reminded that this is real world stuff and to maybe even if you have kids who are watching this or families and i know probably all you guys have thought about this but to just a reminder it's real it's out there even here in nowhere where we're at you know right it's a real thing and you need to keep an eye on your children i one i mean not to make light of anything i it's my coping me- mechanism to make uh, <laughs> I to understand. Make jokes yep. and stuff like he that. He was trying to crack jokes the entire ride home, and then we're just not. And you just <laughs> no. and our whole thing at the end of the movie, you're like, well, I can't wait to go home and debate my life and look at a blank wall because it was just, <laughs> you know, it had that tone. It had it did have a few good jokes in there to lighten it up, so it wasn't. It needed a hundred percent. It needed it a hundred percent needed it because it was a heavy, heavy movie. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. As it should be. How did you find out about it? Because you, you, I had heard of this movie. I had seen it. The name, I still struggle to remember Sound of Freedom as mm-hmm. the title of the film. And that's not a dig at the movie. Sound of Freedom is just not a title that sticks in my brain. Mm-hmm. And so for me, all the marketing went straight past me and over my head. Yeah. And honestly, I probably would and have slept on this movie if you didn't, if Slim, you didn't put it so They kept a really low, I mean, I think that's why the budget was so low. But it looked really good for the budget, actually. But... I think they got kept so low because of the low marketing. It mo- was more... The the direct m- question was, how did you find it? Did you oh, find it just um, through trailers? Did you hear about I, it through... A couple of Facebook things, but we I follow uh, Angel Studios on like an app because we watch uh, the show called The Chosen through that app. Yeah, but Angel. then my fiance as well brought it up. She's like, oh, we should go see this. You know, you guys should... She, she knows about the podcast. She's like, you guys should talk about this. It's a good movie. It's something that should be discussed more. Did she and see I agreed. It? Did you guys see it on Tuesday as well? Opening night, Fourth no. of July. No, we just went with you guys on Thursday. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure. It sounded no. like 
the way some of the people in the group were talking, it seemed almost as if they said, we'd seen it, we need, and we wanted to bring more people to it. I'm, and that, I, I missed oh, I didn't and get I that. Yeah, I just, I just saw a quick review uh, from Chris Gore on Film Threat, and he was just saying that was like a heavy movie and blah, 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 and there were certain parts that I kind of knew about, but... Did you see... So, Chosen was actually... A, I mean, Chosen... So, talking about the show Chosen from Angel Studios, that, that show was across my feed... There was heavy marketing for it. It was on Hulu. I think yeah, it was that, on, that thing has Hulu. blown up, and that's that's roughly around season two when it started doing this. Season one was pretty quiet, pretty quiet. But after like it got a lot of wind in its sails because people started liking it. That's when you'll probably start. You well, probably started. Yeah, seeing my more. sister's a big fan of this Jesus guy, so she was talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen the series a couple I heard times. He's kind now. of a big deal. He's yeah, you know, no. he kind of <laughs> he is. Yeah, but I, I the I guess. I was surprised to see that the movie outperformed. I mean, does it, everyone here kind of agrees that this movie definitely ki- out, out kicked its coverage, right? I mean, oh, this 100%. movie definitely. I mean, is Angel Studios a? Should we be paying more attention to them going forward, and not just for the religious aspect, but also for should we, what should our expectations of a studio like this well, be going thing, forward? One thing. Uh, uh, for anyone like interested or whatever in this movie, it's not like super preachy about religious stuff or anything. And it's not. It, it doesn't it may, throw it in your face, and I like that yeah. about it because it's about. I, I did watch reviewer, and it said it's not about that. It's about the children. Yeah, and no, I'm like, but, that's awesome and I mean, to think about even, it that way. Even chosen was about a Jew, so I mean, it wasn't yeah. even that Christian. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know of a couple of people that are <laughs> not wrong. I guess. <laughs> They were skeptical of seeing this because they thought it was just like a big religious yeah. movie or whatever. But no, they me- they probably mentioned Tim Ballard, the main character's faith, maybe once. Twice. And then, and then that and then the that, guy who ran the, the drug cartel want his once. Right. So three times. And then it's just got that famous line of God's children aren't for sale. Yeah. yeah. And that's like the only religious shit in it. And I mean, it's a reference, right? I mean, it's a reference to, I mean, a, there's like a, it's like a Christian music song, right? I mean... They were. Yeah, I think they, they did a, a rendition of it at the end of the yeah. movie in the trailers or in the uh, did. Not the trailer. The uh, it, it was kind of a it was kind of a recurring theme with the girl, the yeah. child, and she she kept trying to play that music and played it on the drum, and it was like a recurring thing. That I kinda... thought they were doing na 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 na. Oh yeah, so hey, did I. Hey, hey. At the very, I was like, good. good this guy. Guy. I can remember the Titans, all right? I swear <laughs> to God, that's what it sounded like. Uh, it sure that's did. That's what the drum beat was. It matched that song perfectly. It's this really heavy movie. Perfect. And throwing no, na, 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 na. <laughs> perfectly matched. Hey, it. I love that movie. I don't know what I don't know what these kids are watching. It did perfectly match it. I agree with you because every single time I was like. Just quietly in the just back. Off, just Goodbye. change the beat a little bit. I don't. I'm not a. Guy, I'm not a music guy. I don't know much about. What, it, I, what I really liked about the movie though is that it stayed grounded to reality of like the true yes. story instead of embellishing and going buck wild with it. Yes, you can it's get like, those. This is what happened? Yeah. Just, yeah. You can really get those based on a true story, and all of a sudden, all these crazy things start happening. You're like, "There's no way that happened." They're like, "No, 90 percent of it didn't happen," but. It's based on a story. It's it's based on something, but I think I did kind of look up too. Is like, you know how they part of it, um, they went to save like fifty children during that big sting. And they're like, no, it was way more than that. On it was island? like, yeah, it yeah, was like four hundred like yeah. some. It was a oh, lot. There was, like, there was three simultaneous uh, big huge busts all at the same time, and the same they're time. like, they couldn't, they didn't want to swing their budget way more, mm-hmm. so they just kept the number low yeah, we can't pay for fi- for 400 some child people on this yeah so and they're they're, i was like that's this movie so i was like that's way yeah that's awesome tim, you know uh the hell was his last name again ballard ballard tim ballard, tim ballard. He was uh, also doing uh he was also involved in another case in like the dominican republic or some shit at the same time gosh Haiti, that guy is like that. yeah i mean that this movie takes place i one thing i we have to talk about at least a little bit these child actors that they had in this film, at least the lead two, like the brother and sister, mm-hmm. holy shit, were they good. They did good. Yeah, they did good. awesome. I don't think I disliked any like real actor because some of them, like the creepy you know, pedophiles, you'd be like, dude, that guy is creepy. Yeah. Or the guy on the island who's like always smiling in his hair. It's like, yeah. dude, that guy is creeping me out. But I'm they sure that's a like job. a quirk that the real per- I'm sure that's a quirk that they were gravitating. I'm sure. Oh, for sure. He has it's... something like that in real life. I'd yeah. be surprised if they just said, well, let's just make him rambunctiously crazy yeah. to sell the point. And I'd, I'd be surprised. That would blow me away if that's true. And the main actor, Tim Ballard, is he? You could just 
see like how, because I'm sure you know, obviously the job's gonna weigh on you, but you could see it. The guy didn't even have to yeah, say anything. Yeah, he spends a you lot could, of time with uh, well, the actor's name is Jim uh, Caviezel. Yep. Oh yeah, right there. Yep. He's, he spent a lot of time with uh, oh yeah, with Tim Ballard and a bunch of other. Oh, did he? Yeah, and uh, I think he was saying that uh, you know, in the movie, he's. Tim Ballard's got to uh, watch, you know, the tapes and then write yeah. and stuff. For yeah. The oh, yeah. I think uh, Jim was part of kind of uh, was initiated into that. I'm not sure how yeah. much. Yeah. I think like, he was doing probably some not acting with that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. That would be You just could see it in his face, just how heavy. He did a really good job acting and just you could I, see it in his eyes. I'm going to actually... <laughs> it's this is one of those things where like any contrary point to like the success or positives in this movie feels like a shit on the whole movie as a whole. It's it's hard to attack any one part of this movie without it feeling like a, a criticism on the whole film. But I do think he was actually the weakest part. You from think a, so, huh? From a filming from a film perspective, I think he was the weakest aspect G- of Jim? the film. Yep. Um he, I mean, for he, like how good like everyone else was, I mean, that, I could see how you got there because everyone yeah. did a really good job. Exactly. I think that Bill Camp uh, did great as the retired cartel yep. boss. Bill he Camp did, was entertaining he nailed the, every it was time awesome. he was on screen. He, he was, was awesome. You could see how like he... he Batman. You could see Batman. how you <laughs> he knew what needed to get done because he stopped Tim Ballard several times. Exactly. Like he stopped him. He's like, no... I, I know what you're gonna do. We we got we gotta yep. keep face. He was he. It felt like he was playing. Right. It felt like he was playing. Su- Jim was playing superhero the whole time. Yep. And it really frustrated me. I'm like, listen, I get it. You probably had these moments where you had to be very clever, but you're not being clever. Yeah. You're being stupid. His, his emotions I mean, are getting the best of them the whole raid. I was to- pissed off with these people watching the movie. Am I cl- grinding my teeth? I can't imagine being in the presence of uh, right these. Uh, Child traffickers. Oh, you're power. right, and, and it's so easy for us to say that, like, oh, but dude, you right. can't. Why would you go do that? And it's like, dude, I was the same. Like sitting there, like, yeah. just beat this grimy. Your brain will go into a fog. Like, and beat him up, right? I was wondering, you just kick his teeth and yeah, listen, just some like, scumbag, you know. But can we agree that that's not the emotion he portrayed? He portrayed stoicism until he felt called to action. Yeah, that's the not the same thing as showing stress. He wasn't showing stress. Sometimes his fi- his fist would ball up. That's yeah, the best we got out of him for showing the stress. Um, otherwise, it was almost always stoicism. I could see maybe frustration. There, yeah. You couldn't see any any tension. He didn't have any like hold any tension except for the very end when he was trying to get out of there. You know, he, he showed me he showed me crying a lot. Mm-hmm. I hate that. I hate it. If it was, if that's the, if that's the true story that the real Tim Ballard was crying, at, in in relation to how much he cried in this film, fine, I get it. It's it's freaking horrible. It's hard. He <laughs> cried so damn much in this film, and I just every time I was like, I get it. It's I child trafficking. I think of like two scenes really. One I know he's watching and the other one where he's trying to get that uh, millionaire to go along with the plan. Of- what about when he's crying in front of his boss trying to get a one week vacation to the to the Caribbean? It's like anytime you had a monologue, really. Yeah. See, this is the this is my problem. It, mo- it exists. Any right? monologue, any monologue, though, he's spitting straight facts. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, the 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 dialogue is the writing and the dialogue is perfect. I actually I don't, don't have a problem with you that know, at all. I get a little choked up, you know. You've watched thousands of hours of this and had to deal with hundreds of pedophiles. No, he's not. He's I didn't not find a heartless a, human. It's, I didn't find a single moment in this movie that I felt you could justify actual audience tears. It, it I didn't see it. Well, that no. Like there are actual mem- like we went with a large group and some of them were actually crying. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like maybe when like the children got reunited at the end. I'm like. I'll cry for Harry Potter. I'll cry for all sorts Harry of shit. Potter? This won't get me. No. What, 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 what made you cry at to? Harry Potter? <laughs> it's just... He's the an whole orphan, thing. man. He's an orphan. I really <laughs> cried when Ron found out his rat was actually a dude. Oh, <laughs> man. No. You slept in my bed <laughs> for 12 years. I cleaned up your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I cleaned up your so much. So much shit. Why were the, that explains why they were so big. The only problem <laughs> I had... The, one of the problems I had was the whole necklace thing with... Timmy, uh, Timmy Teo. Timmy Teo. Timmy I was Teo. like, what the fuck does that reference or who is that for? I looked it up. It was St. Timothy. He was a oh. 
oh. a priestish person or whatever. See, I didn't know that at all. In the time of Emperor Nero, so forever he ago. was trying to stop violent orgies back in the day. Damn. That's why. In like 90. That's quite the Google you had going on over well, there. Why did this kid once, have once this I necklace? I saw like Nero and Roman Empire, I'm like, I'm in, dude. I'm going down <laughs> yeah, this you, rabbit hole. <laughs> you do deep research that. I appreciate you looking into that. Because yeah, I mean, became a bishop right after Nero's reign. Nero didn't last that long. Hearing that, you almost have to think that it doesn't really belong in this film. I mean, there are other necklaces that kind of make sense. I mean, like there's. Well, maybe it was an actual thing where the kid actually had that necklace of Saint Timothy. Maybe, yeah. So I mean, just, I don't know. Slim, any? Any? Do you know anything about the? Was just like Saint, that's your Saint name? Timothy? No, I don't know nothing about Saint Timothy. You're the religious guy dropping the ball, man. Does it, there's a lot of saints. Right? Doesn't mean Bible, I know about dude. Saint Read a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get on that when I get home. <laughs> just find that chapter. Chapter and verse. About Saint, Tim- Saint Timothy, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's not a thing. I don't know. Uh, I tried to read it once. It skipped to the end and it ruined it for me. So, <laughs> I mean, my general thoughts on this movie. I mean, I'm glad we've gotten into this movie. Haven't spoiled a thing. Um, because this is so. I mean, I think well, there's not really much to talk about when it comes to spoilers. Right. It's just no. There really isn't. Um, I think <sighs> the highlights of this movie were probably the. The areas before the cli- like the build up I thought was really really good. The climax I think um, I like the sting operation. The sting good. operation was pretty good. That the island good. sting operation was pretty damn well put together. It was. You almost go into it thinking, oh dang, this will feel this feels like the end of the movie, and then you I look sh- down and you're like, there's I an hour left. So thought it was the end was when like, they this got it. Short ass movie. I'm like, well that was nice quick little. Th- th- okay, well. Girl's gone, I guess. Well, that's a great bad ending, I guess. But yeah, that's why I thought go was, home. Like, people were like losing their shit in theater. It's like, oh, well, they never found his sister. Yeah. One thing I want to, one thing I have to criticize about this is that I feel, as a matter of principle, I have to throw this out there. Like, I you don't, don't have principles. Yes, I do. I have at least six. <laughs> um, as a matter, of, generally speaking, in film, I don't like messages in movies, regardless of whether I agree or disagree with the message. It's the same thing we've been getting on Hollywood about for making, putting messages in film, and they do it in every film. Now, here's, I mean, again, this movie, the message in it is important. I think it's going to be a culturally significant film. I do think it'll change people's minds, wake a lot of people up. I think it is a well-made film and that's a very different very different thing is that you don't have any well-made films with messages in them typically speaking but i think if we're going to criticize one side of the spectrum for putting messages inside a film we have to do the same thing and be consistent well the movie is just about a dude who is trying to get shit done in child uh sex trafficking trade yeah quits his job does it on his own saves hundreds of kids and takes down multiple trafficking rings and the message is like bt dubs don't do that this shit (laughs) is happening all over the world all the time there's millions of people in uh slave trade yep just like hey like like i said it's not like you have to think this certain way kind of thing it's uh this is what be aware right of this is a thing and not to just it's not a think our way or get out. It's a this is just what's going on like, in the world. I completely appreciate the distinction. I'm I'm just saying. I mean, first off, is are is it in dispute that there is a message in this movie? Is that in dispute? Do we have to? Do we have to so. dispute? I don't that? even it's know. Not, it's I not still don't to even convert you to Christianity or anything. No, that's yeah. not. I so mean, I don't that's know not what the message me- you're seeing in here that you're aiming to criticize because I don't see a message either. Well, it's making a political argument for what. This, I mean, about the policies, Six about the action that you have to do about. It's not a political argument. It depends on which side you're on, apparently. Because, I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> there is a political message in this movie. The are, the the remedies to the issue at hand are all policy. You have at the end of the movie, they were talking about the United States involvement in more treaties trying to remedy this issue. It's a policy issue. It's politics. So, now, whether or not I agree. With the message in the movie or not, it's in there, and it's it's pretty clear. It's not a Christian. It's not a pro-Christian message. It's not an anti-Christian message. It's not pro-LGBT. It's don't steal it's children. Say, How would you ever argue against those policies getting put in place, though? Wait, that's the that's the that's, favorite, the that's the thing that the other your, side says about their like pro-LGBTQ one of your favorite stuff. Movies is How do you argue club. against? What's it? the message in that one? Fuck corporations. <laughs> it's like, 
it's not about the uh, the message that makes you like Who would ever argue like against be things getting put in place about children being kidnapped and put in the sex trade, though? That's not the same thing. There's a message in every it's not the same thing at all. movie or source of media that you have. I don't think that's true. Or right, what's the theme of any like story? Theme. Theme is different than message. Oh, fuck. Here we go. It is. <laughs> it's substantively different. It's it's not the same thing. Okay. Like a movie having a theme, like Lord of the Rings theme is obvious. It's friendship and, jur- awesome. and a journey. Awesomeness. Like that's the theme <laughs> of Lord awesome. of those are the themes of Lord of the Rings. But you have movies with messages, political messages. This movie the th- what was the theme in this movie? Was it don't do si- uh, child sex trafficking? Good triumphing over evil? Sure. But, I mean, that could exist in there. It's yeah. In yeah actually, actually, I do think that does exist in there. But I think that does clear as day exist in this movie, for sure. But, again, there is a message in this film. You're starting to I sound like a it. Rolling Stone or Variety uh, he's, he's article. Trying to, he's trying to make a point <laughs> that we should not stop Child. It's like, do you hear? Jeez, no, I'm not <laughs> saying that. <laughs> Roll, Rolling Stones. Stones. I'm gonna get Twitter barraged. No, Rolling I'm just Stone kidding. put out an article saying that this is basically like a QAnon, QAnon. dad's like wet dream. Yeah, that's it was nonsense. It's like, what I read the hell that, are you trying to die on right now? I read that article. That's some bullshit. That was so stupid. All I'm saying is that we, if we want movies that focus on entertainment instead of a message. We just have to be consistent about you that. You want all movies to be like Indiana Jones where it's just dumb fun? Indiana Jones had a super pro-feminist message in it. Well, the new one, yes. Yeah, the the one that came out a week ago that we're talking <laughs> that is very specifically relevant to the yeah, sentence that, you just said. Yeah, yes, that's that like one. That's like a feminist agenda message thing. Yes. And this and I mean I don't get where you're co- going with with this movie though. I don't either. This movie You're on ha- your realm, bro. Well, this movie has a call to action. There's your message. And what's wrong with that? Nothing. I don't have a problem oh. with this message. I have a problem with messages in movies in general. I think movies should be made to entertain. This movie was made to inform. That's a distinction. Yeah. You got a problem with the need to inform? What's your problem? I don't have a problem <laughs> with this movie. Why do you unless hate? Unless, except the message. Why do you hate stuff? <laughs> I don't. Why can't you just love all things? Yeah. All right. Am I really standing alone on this one? Do you guys yes. really not? Are you guys just giving me shit, or do you really not see where I'm coming from? I don't. This? I don't see where you're coming. I don't from either. On this one. All right. Well, we'll let honest. the we'll let the chat decide. I I think I'm. We'll let the fan decide. <laughs> we'll let the fan decide. I think I'm being. Yay. I think I'm being. Do pretty we clear. kill talks or not? Well, <laughs> put it in a poll. This movie has a call to action. This movie has a message. We've criticized almost every other movie that has ever exist. Okay. Yeah, but those movies aren't saying we there's should also, stop there's also, being sold. There's, right. Yeah, there's We're pro not, this message. That's what I'm saying. We're on board with this message. We agree with it. There's not an opposite side to this argument. There you're on a, one side or, or you're, you're dead. Or you're, <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> or Cody's going to get you. <laughs> you're dead or Cody's going to hunt you. There's not two sides to this argument, so I don't even, get why, why even, this is even a discussion. So like serial killers in prison... Are, uh, kill people that are on the other side of this message. I know. <laughs> I'm not right. arguing against this message. I, I don't even have to acknowledge that there's an existence of an opposition to this message to say that it is a message. But there just, doesn't have to be an opposition you just want at to all. Watch as long as it has an existing message, I'm right. Without a message. Yes. <laughs> That'd be great. <sighs> That's not a thing, probably. Well, Blood Diamond. Blood Diamond was not too that far away from that. was a message about the mining and uh, enslaving of their own people. I know. It was a great movie with a great message. <laughs> <laughs> but it had a message. This is what I'm talking about. I don't want movies to be... I don't well, want movies days, to have messages just, in it. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cry more about it. I will. <laughs> be more like Jim Cavezel. Cave- Cave- cry. Cry all the time. Um... Yeah, that was that. Uh, okay. Like they're always trying to get like pedophiles, like uh, give up some information, uh, or we'll uh, if you don't, we'll extradite you back to Colombia, and we'll do horrible things to you in prison. I'm like, I know a bunch of stories about we do that shit in the U.S. Like criminals, as soon as you're put in gem pop as a pedophile, they will end you. Yeah. No, and I, I had a coworker who was 
in like Who federal prison. In prison. And he's like, yeah, you, you better not have come in there doing that kind of stuff because even it, they it have didn't, morals. Yep, yeah, it didn't end. It didn't end pretty for you. Well, oh, like, good. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I do believe that. I do believe pretty strongly that there is a. Man, I don't know. Do we want to get into like the death penalty stuff? I mean, that feels kind of out of our, out of our ball, so. right? out of our range. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I right. mean, we'll we'll le- we'll leave our hands off of that. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that one next week. Next week, <laughs> stop in next week to hear what we think about the what, death what you, penalty. Yeah. <laughs> Come to us what we think about corporal punishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> punishment. Well, the his. I mean. Should we talk about the uh, the ending of the like the yeah. role, like the credits specifically the credits? Message? Oh, like that that message thing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I did, like, they throw that up right as the credits roll. It's like uh, special a announcement or whatever. In two minutes, it's like even this movie has a fucking <laughs> cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was scene. that was good. Avengers. Everything's got an end, you know, end credit cut scene now. The, it's called an epilogue. So really? I mean, it. I mean, th- okay. There, it's yeah. not epilogue. No, is that it. is where your message was. Was that <laughs> in the epilogue? Yeah. But uh, so he mentions in that though that uh, this movie's been shelved for like five years. Yeah. And oh it's, yeah. And it's not because of the reasons people are like throwing out, where it's like, oh, uh, people don't. There is some of that where like people yeah. don't want this movie being shown or some shit. But it's uh, it was made by 20th Century Fox. Disney acquired 20th Century Fox, and Disney doesn't really want to put that kind of shit out on their kind of platforms. Yep. Because they're supposed to be family friendly, which they're not anymore. But Yeah, they're very pro. <laughs> and so I kind of just sat yeah, around. Yeah, pro some. But, I don't know. If you're a Disney exec, I'm, you might be involved. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that that's true. That's just fact. Send me Epstein's uh, flight list. Yep. But, um... <laughs> No, Disney, you're right. Disney had the rights to the film originally, and then they let it go, um, and Angel Studios picked it up, no, but no, then COVID happened. The movie was made. Angel, Angel Studios mm-hmm. with like 20th Century Fox was supposed to be distributing it, but 20th Century got picked up by Disney like a year or two ago, and so it just sat on the shelf. <clears throat> yeah. Until Disney was like, all right. I guess. They let go of it, because mm-hmm. Disney doesn't currently have their hands on this film at all. I wonder if it's just distributing rights because they picked up 20th Century. Well, 20th sure. it's, Century it's doesn't... It's not like they have their fingers in the making or whatever of it. They might have, like, distribution. 20th Century currently does not have their hands on this film. No. They were distributing it. Right. They they aren't now. No, because they got picked up by Disney, and that's why the movie sat on the shelf for a you while. You guys have right. repeated yourself, like, three fucking times well, over it's, there. The distinction is... You're telling me about what happened three or five, four, and three years ago. I'm today. Angel Studios is the only studio involved in the distribution of this film. Okay. Yes. Sure. I okay. don't know. Well, you, <laughs> I just know that Disney acquired 20th Century, and that's why it sat there forever. Right. <laughs> that's say it all one more I was time. saying. <laughs> say it one but more then, time. so then, 20th Century <sighs> let go of Are the we rights. Just to not it. understanding each other today. Well. I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get from what you're saying because that's not con, that's not disputed. I'm trying to get from what you're saying to the next thing, which is that then Angel Studios was the only studio that had the rights to it. They didn't have a marketing budget for it yet, and or their own independent marketing budget for it yet established. And then COVID hit. Then they crowdfunded. They made five. Mi- I think it was like six million off the crowdfunding. Then it came to theaters. It's almost half the budget of the movie. Yeah. It sure is. It's freaking awesome. Because when you look at the numbers of the actual film itself, uh, the estimated budget for the movie Was is... 14? 14 and a half million. 14 and change. And this movie already, in the in the gross worldwide numbers, it already doubled that number. Well, it's only been seen in U.S. and Canada. Look at that. Yeah. So you have... Um, yeah, so it's kind of like outpacing Indiana Jones by not, a lot. Not in like uh, the making of money, but like um, so Indy com- came out in like forty two hundred theaters or whatever, mm-hmm. and this one's in like half as many. Yeah, true. And so it's like outselling in that way to where no, it's made more money than Indiana Jones. Has it? Yeah, fourteen point three million in the opening. Oh, Indian just made three in the opening. I guess I don't know full. 
Well, Indy, Indy's been out a week longer, but oh. well, and yeah, Indiana Jones came out on uh, July second. So it's sixty but, million. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yep. gross is a hundred. Oh, I guess it only came out a couple days earlier. Yeah, but Indiana Jones is gonna lose almost half of its. Um, it's gonna lose more than half of its. Holy budget. cows! There's yeah, cause another the, article that came out that uh, budget's nuts. Uh, uh, we should they, throw this. The industry's been like lying, or not really lying, because it's like they don't need to give uh, the number they spent on a movie, right? But they've been like downplaying it by like a hundred million dollars. So any movie you could that comes out from like Disney, you could almost put like another hundred million dollars into that budget. I believe that entirely. Holy but cows! Look at like um. So let me just we're talking about Indiana Jones budget, but we haven't said the number yet. So Indiana Jones estimated budget on IMDb is almost 300 million. It's like sh- basically like is a few, like a few, like a couple million short of 300 million. It is currently sitting at, at it, again, this is per IMDb, 172 and change million, million. dollars. It's not even close. Worldwide. 120 million short. And that does not account for its marketing budget or what Cody just, the inflated budget. Yeah. Plus all the reshoots with the, which they never add. Yep. So it needs to make somewhere around 500. 800. Holy cows. Can I also North of 800 mil to make a profit. Yeah. But you're not spending 300 million dollars to make a million. No, you're spending 300 <laughs> million dollars to make 400 million dollars. You want to double that margin. No, um but the visuals on we should talk about the visuals for Sound of Freedom cuz the visuals were, were actually awesome. awesome. The effects were good. The the wardrobe was good. The yeah, destination it's not a, shooting was it's good. It's not a cheap studio make or whatever. It doesn't no. look like it. They, it looks like they did an excellent job on yeah, it everything. Looks like a movie the movie. tone, the the scene, the sound, the sound, cinematography. Was the sound good. studio was very was good. Great. The only part, and I I don't know if I'm the one to pick this in, is such a nitpick. But when that helicopter comes in over the that big statue, was it of someone's Jesus, voice going? It looked horrible. I didn't even notice. Helicopter? Go back. The helicopter that comes in over the city, over the big statue of Jesus, over the city. Oh, I missed it. You got to go back and watch it. It looks CGI to all belief. I was like, ugh. Well, I'll, uh, but if I can nitpick that hard, it's clearly a very well done. The uh, movie. The fact that you can you can produce this movie manufacture it for 17 million dollars and you have uh and you have like paranormal is another good example of it wasn't paranormal, Ooh, paranormal activity like, yeah it was filmed for like 4.5 mil and it made like 450 it million it was just change i thought it was like, like, like 100 grand it could have been less yeah, it probably should have been less that that's you know that's like kind of what started all those um that horror genre kind yeah. of yeah, brought the, back the the, uh, the, the hand found footage. Film, found footage. Yep. That's what brought it back because that movie made a killing. It made so much freaking so money. So much money. But this is the this is the loudest message. I mean, if you're just ve- fifteen, 15 grand. grand, it was in the tens. Yeah, it fifteen, was 15 grand. grand, and it made two hundred million almost. This is what got Bloomhouse on the map, though. That was just box office. That was back when DVDs were still being sold. Like everyone Holy would get the DVD. Cows. Yeah. I'd say I made it somewhere around like three hundred. I do kind of want to <gasps> see that movie. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Bloomhouse Productions been doing a good job too. I mean, these these studios that are prioritizing their budgets are still making fantastic Gosh, films. Bank. And like all, and yeah, and I mean, <clears throat> all those found footage just cheap. killed it for a yeah. while. It's super cheap. Well, the most super. expensive part <laughs> of like any of these movies would be just hiring the actors. Yeah. For sure, because it's a guy walking around with some crummy camera and a couple right. of cameras placed randomly in the house. Well, and you're you gotta do nothing. You've got a uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Indiana Jones the pajamas for the children. What was fl- <laughs> the Flash's estimate? Uh, the Flash was like two hundred. Yeah, uh, three fifty. So what we're kind of getting at with this is like it. It did a lot with the money it was given. You know, we're just going with the extremes here on either side, obviously, but. Well, it's like you don't need to make million, a good movie, and we've that had the discussion before. Exactly, dollars. we've had this discussion before. All that money just inflates it and doesn't improve it. And it makes it impossible to make it it's back. It's like where does exactly. all that money go to? <clears throat> just like executives doing coke on set. We I don't mean, know. Two hundred mil. No, That's it's not right. way more than that. Yeah, they reshot it like five times. That's probably like this version. <laughs> it would surprise me if the Flash didn't cost seven hundred million dollars to produce. <laughs> Holy cows, it only made 250 mil, which is, I mean, a lot of money. But... Yeah. It's still a flop. And that is not mm. even accounting for refunds. 
That <laughs> yeah. doesn't even account. <laughs> that just counts for ticket purchased. It doesn't count for money given back because the movie was such shit. It was terrible. But what I yes, Slim, I think you you summarize it pretty dang well. I mean, the point we're making is that the you fourteen point six million <clears throat> went to very good places and was spent very well in this movie. On talent, it looked very good. Yeah, it was yeah, definitely see, it mostly went on talent and then uh, uh, destination shooting. Probably. Yep. But like probably yeah. So yeah, you got that fourteen point six on that. But like with the Flash and Indy, most of it shot in front of a green screen in the studio's backyard in one warehouse. Yeah. 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 So it's not like you're paying for the production team to go to fucking Italy or something. Yeah. I think the majority of that two hundred million or the estimated. Bigger number. I think most of that went to Ezra Miller's uh, therapist. Uh, went to his <laughs> lawyer. <laughs> therapist. <laughs> like, we need this guy ready for public speaking again. That's not going to happen. Can you do happen. it? That's, uh, no. For how much? Most of Flash's budget went to rehab. <laughs> oh, they made a whole wing for him. A whole wing. So. Fuck, you give me $14 million. <clears throat> I bet I could put on a better product. Yep. $14 million, I think. Uh, could, I mean, fourteen million dollars could probably go a long way. You think about like what older films used to used to be able to produce. All the clever tricks the stu- the like producers had, the studios had, the yeah. director had. I mean, if you ever watched, I watched a documentary on how Terminator was was made, and obviously they didn't make a giant robot exosuit and had it what? marching around. Why not? They made plastered uh, like a plastered uh, mannequin slash puppet. And they just had it on top of people's like backs, or they'll have a single foot. If you if you look back and watch the frame by frame of like the Terminator, you'll see that you almost never have a full shot of the Terminator. And the ones you do are um and like the one scene where the he's full like frontal. Well, the scene in the Terminator <laughs> where he's stepping out of the the exploded semi truck flame, that's uh, stock motion. Man, I haven't seen that movie since the eighties. Oh, so the eighties. <laughs> well, I've so, seen it since like. You know the early 2000s. I've been around a while, <laughs> but I, you look good for your age. Thank you. I think that I'm actually 10. You're old. How would you guys rate this film? Um, I think are we there? I think are we? Or do we have? Are we ready to rate this? I thing? guess unless you guys got anything really else to break down for. I mean, we didn't go through the whole story, but it's it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just, just a dude going around, and going around and stopping and bad South people. America. Yeah, you know, basically, and that whole really tense end scenes are really good you know he finally finds the girl he's been looking for the whole time and busts him out of there in the middle of a rebel jungle and they're getting i thought that was relatively easy yeah i, I was like oh this guy's done for yeah the he, second he fought he the big the, boss i was like dude yeah. you're done you're done yeah i think yeah i agree with you i think that i mean he was in and out of there in a few hours and that's it, you're right. i think I that's know. a good point that's a good point then um, I thought the guy in the shotgun was going to get, you know, shot when they were chasing him. Uh, right when they shot at the window, I was like, oh, no, like someone's going down. Yeah, yeah. Batman was going down? Yep, I did. The moment. Cause that, yeah, that's like a, I would say like a loved character because he's so like. He did a good. He's awesome. Yeah. Like I know. It's, so, yeah, a regular Hollywood studio would probably just kill him. They probably <laughs> would if this wasn't based on, quote, unquote, a you true know, story. A true right. story. That's a. That is, yeah, that's one thing. I mean, that took me out of the movie a little bit because no one died. Well, the, that moment specifically, I think you guys well, are talking died. about. Oh yeah. When they're on the, my thought was when they were on the boat heading to the rebel camp, and they're like, "I'm taking one of you." I thought they were gonna blow Shit, the other one yeah, away. Yeah. I thought he was too. And I, and I was like, the fact that it didn't happen felt so unreal. So many times, Batman should have died. Yep. <laughs> I'm Batman. Um. All right. So his name is like Vampiro or some shit. But uh, yeah. in the actual credits in the movie, I just saw it as Batman. <laughs> like, Batman. <laughs> well, how did you see him as Batman? It said in the credits, Batman. What are you talking? About? Bill Camp. Vampiro. Yeah. Yeah. Vampiro. I Batman. Didn't, I'm not getting this reference. I didn't see that. I guess. Well, one, I think it means Batman. Vampiro means yeah. Batman. I don't speak Spanglish. Spanglish. But. <laughs> um. <laughs> But <laughs> all right, I suppose I'll give my my rating first. Then we'll go Cody, and then Slim. We'll let you wrap this one up, um, and Thanks. then we could probably jump into a few other topics since we still have some time. I think. Yeah. Um. So my thoughts on this movie, all in all, I thought it was really, really well acted. I think the child actors, I think, were mm-hmm. the stars of this show. I think they did so freaking well, and I think that 
when you watch a movie with child actors, they you, usually suck. They usually suck, or they're forgotten and just kind of like, oh, a child is acting poorly. Whatever. It almost does Give nothing to the immersion. <laughs> yeah, it almost does nothing to how you feel in the movie. But this, the child actors in this movie bring this movie out. I think as I think they make they make the best part of it. Um, I think overall, I would give this movie probably a a six and a half, seven. Um, it currently has an eight point four on IMD or IMDb, and I think that I could under I understand that rating. I just don't think it's that high. I think it was a good movie. I I think the thing that people are gravitating towards the most in this movie are the call to action the positive message in it and they're hearing a lot of they're seeing a lot of themselves in this film as in like this is a call to action you have and I think that's that's good but it doesn't do anything for telling me if this is a good or a bad film so if I strip away the message I'm putting I'm probably going to put it at about seven as in the objective outlier you robot over there that, that's his opinion next Cody <clears throat> beep boop beep I agree. Seven. Six, six point five. It's it's an alright film, all in all. But yeah, like the biggest part for me is the message and getting out there that uh child trafficking and pornography has gone up like five thousand thousand percent. You got on my ass so hard not ten minutes ago for saying there was a message in this movie at all. No, I'm saying the <laughs> biggest part that like this would be a ten out of ten if I'm including the message. Okay. But it's just like taking it out that it's like a real world thing and just having it as a movie itself. Yes. I it's swear to six, God. Six you, are you gaslighting me right now? I swear I to God, it. you were calling me crazy for even saying that there was a message in this movie. I'm doing a little social experiment fucking with your brain. Anyway. It's working. I'm fucking dying over here. Yeah. <laughs> You're killing the, me. Yeah. If it isn't the whole like slave message and whatnot. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a above average film. I mean, it's still a good movie being at a six, 6.5. I think uh, if you... If you compare it to the last 30 years of film, it's probably sitting at 6.5. I think another thing that helps it get a little higher is if you compare it against, like, modern era movies, like the last five years. Then all of a sudden, it's, like, above the crop. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you're saying, like, the average movie for the past, like, five years, it's, like, like an eight or nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have not had much to grab onto. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Decently acted. Decently shot. Slim? Yeah. No, I'm gonna have to agree with like kind of the I, IB um, score at the 8.4. I think it was. I would sit mine around there. Um, you know, if I was a a parent, I highly like encourage parents to go see this. Just to, like I said in the beginning, to reinforce that in your mind that this is real world stuff. And I'm not gonna, you know, I think the message of the story should be brought to this rating in my opinion because it's one we should bring to light not like i'd say it's yeah one of the most important things going on right yes now. and yes. so that it's it's a huge epidemic now like we said earlier it's in the past since 2000 i forget what they say i think it was 2016 it's gone up five thousand percent yeah it's crazy so it's growing so i, I just yeah. it's mo becoming more profitable than the drug the drug and they they even said like you know we don't know if this is true but they they said it's gonna probably pass it because it's yeah, because you can. They're human, a, so you it's not like you a just do a, a bump of coke, and it's gone. You know that's what they kind of yeah. said in the movie, and it's. And so, if I highly recommend, if you're you know a parent or a grandparent, you go see this just to reinforce that in your brain. Yeah. Don't bring your children here. to this. Don't yeah. do that. I think I want even I want even back up what you're saying a little bit more, even just to endorse it from the studios pers from our studios perspective. It's, I don't think I. I mean, I'm not speaking for Cody or for you, Slim, but I think that. This is definitely a movie that, as a, as third party studios, as who we are, we are definitely recommending people go check out this yes. movie. And it's not gonna blow you out of the water like these two said. It's not a film that's gonna, you know, change anything, you know, <clears throat> in the film industry. But it's really, it's a wake up yep. call. That's what it is, and that's why I, I would say go see it. Yep. Because I, I just want to caveat my my rating by saying this movie does deserve to be seen in theaters. It almost. Again, I, I, as a, this isn't uh, purely a call to action, but I do think that if you are an audience member of third-party studios, if you enjoy our content, you should just 
consider give consider giving this a watch in theaters. Mm-hmm. There are now who's to- doing the call to action? Well, there are tools. So uh, there are tools <laughs> you can do. There are tools you can take advantage of to see this movie for free in theaters. Yep. Uh, Angel if it's Studios, about money, they just go to their website and they have reimbursement um, or like reimbursement or like if you even want to pay the it pay forward. forward kind of yeah. Yep. And so, there's also the. Uh, was it the under railway? It's not yep. the underground or whatever. It's something I know you're talking yep. yeah. about. Um, so you could uh, help do all that stuff to, you know, provide stuff for Tim these Ballard, families. Tim the main and, character, is still doing all this shit. Yeah. Yep. Which so, I can't imagine how you'd be able to do it anymore. You'd have to be in the background now. Everyone knows his yeah, face after after be being in court. You know. I just I the. The six, the set, the six and a half, the seven comes from an obligation I have to be consistent with how I review. And movies. no, it's it's I get that, and I it is like <clears throat> objectively speaking how the movie was. It's yep. that rating, but it's an important film. It's an important message to yep. to keep. Yeah, it's definitely your a children I'll, safe. I'll die on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, you know, we got a bit of time left. Do we want to talk about what, some other stuff that's happened right lately? Yeah. What do you want to talk about? I want to talk about Call of Duty. You want to talk about Barbie after uh, talking Barbie. about Barbie? Call could, of Duty. <laughs> Call of Duty with all. I mean, the Call of Duty news is oh a little old goodness, at this point. Oh my goodness, that's that's going crazy over the last few weeks, hasn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. So you have Activision, who so uh, a few weeks ago there was a, a news Transition. story that broke with um yeah. <laughs> Call of Duty. Call of Duty. They're no, there was a uh, there was a story that broke out where these um I think they were I'm gonna get this wrong but some I probably I, are some Iranian fathers and parents were fighting with Antifa outside of a school, um because yeah, they were this. protesting certain me- certain stuff that was inside the school. Um, Armenian. 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 Okay. I, yeah, I knew I was gonna get it wrong. I was honest about that. Yeah, one's Middle Eastern, one's white. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Same, <laughs> but, right? Um. Tick for tack. But there was a fight outside of the school Fish. and. A, I think it's one of the co-owners of FaZe Clan, a very popular gaming franchise and just, competitive. Uh, I think he's a co-owner. Okay. I think Cheaper, he's a, the guy's probably loaded. Them. He's in the he's in the vanguard of that of that company. He's I don't know exactly his position or title, but he um, there's a so one of the owners of FaZe Clan, Nick Merks, had a, a had an agreement with Activision Call of Duty to have a bundle skin, um, graphic in, added in into game, into the Call, Call of Duty. Duty. Warzone Modern game. War for, yep. yep. And so Nick Merckx on Twitter responded to a tweet about this incident saying, leave those children alone. Something about... Or leave them kids alone. Something to that effect, yeah. For this, in response to that tweet, Call of Duty pulled Nick Merckx's skin from Off the, of from the I bundle. I saw that, and it just a domino effect started happening. Like, basically, big streamers like, okay, pull mine too then. They yep. bud lighted themselves. Pull, yeah, they yeah, bud lighted yeah. themselves. Is a really, I remember, really wasn't good it Tim, to... Tim the Tat Man? Tim the Tat Man and Dr. Disrespect. They both are like, pull my stuff, and then they, and you know, it, it's so, you know, it might not seem like much, but they have thousands, tens of thousands of followers, each of them, and they're like, they, you know, deleted Call of Duty on live. They're like, deleted. Yeah. I want all you guys to do it too, and yeah, sure yeah, they Dr. lost Disrespect. a lot of money. Uh, Doctor Disrespect uninstalled the game, and uh, didn't Shroud do that too? I think so. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, live on live on stream, and then Tim. There was kind of a little controversy around him because he was kind of soft in his first. Uh, yeah. When he first brought well, because how much money they make, they're like, uh, it's a hard. And then he's like, hey, he'll die on off there too. Yeah. I well, don't want to be associated. Well, it's a hard hill to die on, so I understand their like gray line about it. Well, this one, well, it goes it goes into the like uh, uh, sound of freedom. Just, just leave kids out of it. Leave. Yeah. Them out. Yep. This is a, an easy hill to die on. It is. There's. I mean, honestly, I think as a, I mean, even from our perspective, I mean, I don't believe that if we ever were put in a position where we had to be like, uh. Let's say Colton. You know, he's a friend of the channel. Yep. He's been on the he's podcast on before. Um, we'll have other guests too that we're looking forward to having on. But let's say he, let's say he lost his job because of something similar, and the company he was working for was a sponsor of the channel, right? Yeah. And it was something like that. I don't think we would have, and I don't think we would have any hard deliberations about whether or not we would drop them like rocks. Yep. So I mean, like, I don't think that stuff like. Third party studios, we make our decisions based on principle, based on the things yeah. we enjoy doing. Mainly because no one gives us money. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> yeah, we're not uh, reliant on that ESG money. <laughs> yeah, we're just reliant yes. on my savings yes. account and my yes. personal <laughs> investment into the fucking channel. 
<laughs> I work for free at the moment. Yeah, it's we all real fun. It's all time and investment. It's all fun. Wait, you're getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm I, not. But the so there's been a couple of people and creators who have stood up and put content forward that they're trying to David and Goliath this uh, Call of Duty franchise. I haven't touched Call of Duty since Cold War. I didn't touch Vanguard. I never was on board with Warzone. I never will be on board with Warzone. I hate. You played the new Modern Warfare. I did Warzone a bit, and I, I didn't really it. like it. I hated it. Yeah, it's not like you got into it. Yeah, I like I like the two Modern Warfare's, but I hated Warzone, and then all my buddies played Warzone, so I yep. quit playing Call of Duty. So I, I played for a couple years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm never gonna I'm never gonna touch Call of Duty again. But no. a, la- a couple weeks ago, I don't even know the new one's coming out. There I don't was know an, what it is. There was an open beta of a game called X Defiant made by Ubisoft. Hey, we played that. Yeah, you should check it out. Yep, we did a lot. We did a couple of live streams <laughs> the days that it was, it was uh, really open beta. I, liked it. I enjoyed the heck out of it too. I, I am looking forward to it. I think that probably get into that as a consistent live stream if it, so. uh, it fun. if it comes out and it remains fun. That game stressed me the fuck out at the, it end, was. Towards the end of it. It was though. a very big mix of it's like, some Overwatch rebound. and it felt like the old school Modern Warfare. Yep. One. It, it needs some rebalancing, but it I think does. generally speaking it'll be good. It um does. the shotgun sucked. The shotgun. I was watching your live stream and you like shot someone point blank and didn't die. I'm like, well, what's the point? Well, and my and the people who were watching, you know, because we had a pretty decent. I mean, it was about average live streaming audience, and we had some good support. And they were telling me, "Get use the double shotty." And you're like, "Please, I'd rather die. I am gonna die." <laughs> and then I did it anyway for hours. <laughs> it's fantastic. Ended um, up seven and forty-two. Oh, uh, it was bad. But God, you suck at games. <laughs> not. I am not great. One v one, me loser. <laughs> but um, to to make, good. to make matters worse, uh, Activision went with a huge ban hammer. Oh, did they, as far as I've this news so far, that this is as far as I've gotten. So this is all news to this me. This is all new news. <laughs> news news. <laughs> Woo! Activision went to all of these uh, independent groups who had their own servers running Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Black Ops oh, Three, really? like the OG games, the fun really? ones, the yeah. fun ones. Yeah, there were these people who had full servers that were running multiplayer platforms, um, keeping these old. Uh, ser- so these they were a bunch alive. of fun killers. Is what you're about to tell me? They nuked three of the largest platforms that were operating: fun Modern killers. Warfare Two, Black Ops Three, Black Ops Two, and they so nuked those servers. Really popular ones. Oh, these were huge servers. These were thousands and th- these were tens of thousands of people on these servers um, as regular visitors. So to these servers, so a bunch yeah, of buzz kills. they nuked the hell out of them. And my position is, is that Call of Duty is an anti-fan company now. They sure are, and they have been for a while. I think they're yeah. anti-fan. They're pro. They're pro. They're Twitch. They're Twitch. Big Twitch names, so they can get more money. Yep, that's what they are. So now, uh, well, Blizzard put out you know Diablo Four, but it's a good game. So now, don't play the sorcerer. No, now don't play the sorcerer. He's so bad. Just don't touch it. We have the. Uh, Do not touch it. <laughs> we have the combining of Activision Blizzard. Now it's just one company, but these games are in development. I think before. Is that I going so. through? I thought that got blocked. No, Activision Blizzard it is happened, a thing, but Microsoft's uh, acquisition of said oh, uh, okay. Activision Blizzard is still kind of up in the air. Got it. I'm with it. I'm hip. So going forward now, I hope all they the get games em. are probably gonna suck. Yeah. Because now they're not two separate entities. Yep. Well, this is why it's so important nowadays more than ever to support small studios, small independent creators. Like us. Like, subscribe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, so, it's, so mu- it's so important to support small creators because this is the this is as weak as the industry ever will be, I think. It is. I agree. I think Hollywood is... No, it's getting weaker because... Uh, Writer's well, strike is still going on. Actor's strike might start up. Well, it's the perfect time to jump in, I think, is what he was kind of getting at. That's what I'm getting at. It's like yeah. to be you have in him this on his moment. heels. You have him backing up. You have yeah. him retreating. Because we got like nothing, no, nothing entertainment wise of any significance is going to come out for like the next couple years because of this shit. Yeah. Exactly. This is why, like, you have. So, an, another creator that we support on the channel is Eric July, uh, Ripperverse. Who? Who? Uh, you know who Eric July is. <laughs> Um, so Eric July is a content creator. He was a musician, um, and he started his own comic book uh, studio called that's called the Ripperverse. It's a singular universe type franchise like DC, like MCU, except they have committed to having no time, uh, 
I'm sorry, no multiversal stuff. Oh, it's God. one story instead of having like 20 different uh, Spider-Mans or like yeah. uh, time That's travel. Good. So it's every new, character but... death matters because they'll never come back. Every every important incident will affect other storylines. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's one long narrative throughout multiple variants or multiple stories, but it's all part of one timeline. And I think that's phenomenal. Um, I got their issue one as part of pre-order. They're almost two million dollars so in on their pre-order on their second issue. So yeah, they put it out last year. Was the first set one? Yeah. And that reached like three point four and change. Three point four? No, it's four million and change. Oh, it's four and change. Four yeah, and they're change. almost to two million right now, and I think it goes till end of August, I think, or middle of August, I think. I could be wrong. I'm gonna get issue two. My thing is that I was trying to figure out how to get this new audio equipment, so I was trying to play with money. So I I hadn't ordered yet, but now that I'm feeling good, I think I'm gonna order pre-order a copy of that. Well, it's like it's just an independent creator, just some random dude made a comic book, threw it out there. And was expecting what, like fifty grand, maybe? I think it was fifty grand, something like that. Four and, and a change blew million. Up. He got four and a change million, and now it's just grown in such a big company. Yeah, because he just he produced something that people aren't wanting. Yeah, I called our local comic book shop just to ask them. I'm like, hey, are you guys going to be getting in the or carrying the Isom Comics series? Um, and they said, no, we typically only order through major distributors. I'm like, well. I haven't shopped at your business in a year or two anyway. I guess, well, I don't have any. I guess I won't have a reason going forward. Go on so there now. I guess we're good. You and me, status quo. I guess we'll stay at that. Yep. Since you want to stay with these well, You don't want to buy the uh, gay Tim Drake Robin? What? <laughs> if that's real, I don't acknowledge its existence. Doesn't he get pregnant? Oh, the Joker gets pregnant. Joker gets pregnant. Yeah. That makes sense. What? That's a man, baby. That's a man, baby. <laughs> <What>? Yeah. <laughs> We're losing you, Slim, are we? Yeah, what the is <laughs> going on over there? Um, but there's um uh, what's the sh- what's the movie coming out? Um the short film by Critical Drinker. Oh, based on his Ryan Drake? Yeah. Series? So Critical Drinker is another YouTube content creator. Um he also established author. He's got like nine books in this series. Yeah. He was a huge inspiration for us getting into this because he was kind of like talking and he was being critical of the same stuff we were critical of, and it was, it was kind of inspiring for he us to a little bit. Just got drunk one day and reviewed a movie. And <laughs> yeah, uh, he does. He, history. He does movie reviews, but he's also a writer. Um, he's his he's doing. I think it's like a fifty minute short film uh, based on one of the based on his books that he's written, and we crowdfunded to that. I put. I think I donated like two hundred dollars. I think I met, I have access to a private screening when that comes out. Oh, cute! So that'd be cool. Um, cute. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be fun. But yeah, this is the time to support small creators. Um, if you know someone who's working on a project, give them some love, give them some support. Unless that's another one where they're only asking like the bare minimum and made like so oh, much more, thousand percentile more. Than yeah, they were it's insane. It's and that gave them the option to get a much bigger script. Yeah, extend I, the movie, better production. I really wish he had made enough to justify it being a full le- feature length film. It's depending on how well this one does, they might start making movies. Yeah. Um, that would be, that would be great. Um, but that's what we need. And I mean, Daily Wire is making movies. I don't really, they're not making movies I care about, generally speaking, but I mean, they're quality, I guess. So yeah. And they're also trying not to be uh, political. Yeah. It's just not beating you over the head with a message. Angel Studios is standing out, making good movies, uh, making good content. So, I mean, there are these companies to gravitate towards if you're tired of watching crappy movies. You just have to put a little bit of attention. You just have to pay a little bit of attention to try to find them, and you will. They'll, they'll stand out. It'll be stuff you love. The greatest piece of content I've enjoyed over the last year and a half was a podcast called We're Alive, and that's actually going to be part of the pilot of a new spinoff series we're doing on third-party studios, uh, third-party profiles. Um, so look forward to that. That'll be coming up in a week or two. But um, anything, any other major news that's come out over the last uh, couple of weeks? I mean, there's been a lot of news. It's just I think I kind of blindsided you guys. I don't know if we knew that we were going to be going over additional news. No, it's all good. I think we'll talk more in the next episode about kind of news stuff. But oh, I think we're good on this one. We no, it's just all movies suck. Yeah, all movies suck. Tip your waitress. <laughs> um, yeah, you know the motto. Life you stuff. Know, 
Um, we'll have a channel announcement uh, update video coming out next week sometime. Uh, regular Bannerlord coming out on Tuesday. Uh, Slim, are you previewing any live stream for next week? Well, by the time this comes out, I don't know. Right. <laughs> that was a slight dig. Maybe, maybe. Good point. I guess if I don't get this out by Monday, it doesn't yeah. matter. Huh? When yeah. is it coming out, editor? <laughs> these, these, today. No, it won't be today. Days. I, gotta, I still got to finish Bioshock, and then I was thinking about if I can get it to work doing a playthrough of KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, Ooh, that, that could be, be fun. fun. Bad? But it's... Good. Oh, evil. I'm going to burn worlds down to the children. ground. I'm going to be a <laughs> bad little Sith man. I'm be a bad little Sith. <laughs> a bad, bad little, little boy. Sith. He's a bad boy. I guess you'll have to turn in to find out to see what I do for sure. Well, we oh, One quick thing. Baldur, er, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3. Mm-hmm. They were talking about this on FNT last night. Yeah. About the bear sex, apparently, that you can have in that game. <laughs> yep. There's some. Have you gotten to that? <laughs> some. No, it's not unlocked yet. I haven't unlocked it yet. <laughs> there's some, yes. There's <laughs> some. That's uh, weird, but okay. Whatever it wants to do. How, would, so how would you guys feel about doing a uh, Us 3 and maybe Mithras, uh, Jamie, doing uh, Baldur's Gate 3 when the official release comes out in August? Do they have... Does it's only on PC, isn't it? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know about last Mithras year. Mithras ain't got a PC strong enough for that. I, I I I'd be surprised if it wasn't last gen compatible. It's a big game, and they've been they've been on open or not open beta, uh, early access for a long time. Sure. Okay. But I think it'd be fun for the four of us to get on that. Obviously, uh, you guys are kind of an RPG with multiple people where it's really story driven. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you were kind of crushed by Diablo 4 because you were just getting rushed through it playing with other people. I was enjoying the cutscene, and Jamie would just be halfway through the next dungeon. Everything's it's- dead. Even last night, me and him were watching the cutscene, and he's like, you guys getting in here? What do you mean? The bosses have dead. <laughs> what? I just, Stop that. I was, getting, I was getting frustrated by that. You're not wrong, but I think it could be fun. It would um, be fun, yeah. But all right, I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, this is a good episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope uh, this comes out good. And if you guys um, have any oh. comments, make sure to throw a message at us in the comments section. Let us know if you saw Sound of Freedom, what your thoughts on it were. Tell us what you think about the Call of Duty controversy and how that's affected you guys and what you're playing these days. And we will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace. Bitches and hoes. Bows, <laughs> hoes. Is that how we end it?